Hey everybody, Flimsy Lunch Tray here, back with our How to Map series as we explore the map Greece um, here in World of Warships. And today is part four of part six, uh, specifically for the map Greece. Um, and part four is going to consist of talking about cruisers, which honestly, cruisers is probably one of the most exciting uh, uh, ship types that I'm looking forward to discuss for the map Greece because there's just so much potential specifically here for cruisers and how they interact um, with the map and also interacting with uh, ships on the uh, enemy team. So, uh, as a custom, uh, first we're going to start off in talking about um, cruiser positioning um, when it comes to uh, the map Greece. Now, again, as a reminder, uh, with Greece, uh, you will find tier 8, tier 9, tier 10 uh, ships uh, on this map. So, a higher tiered map. Um, so within that, you get to, okay, so I'm thinking, you know, Cleveland, I'm thinking Wooster, I'm thinking Riga, Donskai, Brindisi, um, you know, Stalingrad, all the, those types of cruisers, Minotaur, Neptune, uh, Edinburgh, uh, Edinburgh. Um, so those are the type of ships, cruisers you're going to find um, battling here um, on the map of Greece. So, um, as you guys know, in the overview I gave, um, one of the things I really talked about that's really effective with cruisers on this map um, is these four islands here. So, uh, for example, uh, with the types of uh, cruisers that you have, um, whether or not you're even a radar cruiser, but especially for radar cruisers, um, the positioning that works really well here um, for radar cruisers um, is uh, this positioning. Um, and then, you know, this is a ranked um, future here uh, with the map. Uh, randoms and domination mode, you'll have three circles um, going across uh, the center uh, in a line. So those things will still be kept in mind. So this information I'm giving you works um, either way. Um, again, typically for ranked uh, and random battles, um, not so much for claim battles as that tends to be uh, beast uh, all on its own. Um, and then you might have another cruiser who wants to try to work more the flank uh, where he maybe he goes here or he positions himself over here um, If you had another cruiser another idea would be able to go you know, something like uh, this or even uh, to here uh, When it comes to cruisers on the enemy team uh, You'll have something like this effect um, We there or also kind of positioned there um, and then you know you have another one usually I don't I don't really see cruisers too often actually sitting here in this area because it tends to be bad with uh, you know torpedoes get thrown up this way but sometimes you'll find that um, so let's just kind of erase that line so there or the more often course I see enemy cruisers take is that they come more around uh, this way. This tends to be a bit more popular. Um, but this is usually where I see cruisers um, interacting at um, on the map uh, Greece. Um, the center locations of these four islands are really, really strong positions um, because it's very hard for the enemy team to be able to unhinge you from these positions unless uh, a flank collapses. So. First, let's talk about these inside positions and we'll talk about these outside positions um, and kind of also why I'm, I'm recommending um, the, them all together. But with the inside positions, what you have with these cruisers, especially if you're a radar cruiser, um, if you're sitting here in one of these positions, um, your radar coverage um, tends to be quite epic. And I really don't know how um, to convey this to actual map size. Um, but I mean, you could have you know radar coverage that's something like I'm I'm a terrible drawer of circles. You guys just just so you know that. Let me just kind of draw out two lines here. So let's just say something like that, and it's kind of a little bit off, but you get the idea um, that your radar honestly would go further out than this. But your radar coverage is really good because as you start um, working here. Let's try to make this a bit more effective. <laughs> uh, that's a bit, I think that's a bit more realistic. But, um, you know, this is something maybe like a uh, 9, 10 kilometer radar that you might find in something like the, the Buffalo, the, the Des Moines, um, you know, Wooster. 
you know, and then you have even the Russian radars, which, you know, go up to 12 kilometers, so even farther away. But with this radar coverage, um, you know, even in these positions, is you're locking down uh, the enemy team um, f from getting through, right? So it's kind of like these radar bubbles, because that's another really poor example of <laughs> radar. Um, so it, not that there's usually four radar cruisers um, on a map, but when you're in these positions, you have a really good coverage. Um, one with the center, it pre helps prevent usually de destroyers um, from yellow rushing you, um, but also even rushing the outside, kind of how we talked about, um, you know, with aircraft carriers, you know, you have to be conscious that destroyers will sometimes even try to uh, pursue and just go chase an aircraft carrier um, along the edge. So the radar coverage um, that you get um, here on the map, uh, Greece, um, is really effective because uh, this, these positions are really hard, uh, these four center positions in particular, it's really hard for the enemy team um, to get you out of, um, off of these positions. Now, if I'm something like, say I'm a smoke Neptune, okay, and then maybe as a Stalingrad, there's a um, Buffalo or something on my enemy team um, who's gone, or on my team that's gone for this position. You know, I'm not going to fight him for this spot because if he's, if I know he's going here, if I, you know, suggest him to go from there, he's going to be able to utilize his radar really well um, and have good map coverage versus him being out here on the edge, right? So if I'm something like a, a Neptune, then I'm likely to work and go towards, you know, this position here or maybe even up over here. I kind of like being able to work off um, this spot here. And I can smoke up outside the radar range if there's a uh, enemy radar cruiser here or even a battleship that's here. And I can park here and I can just start peppering them. Or even, you know, if you're able to fire over the island, um, which I think is a bit harder with this island um, as it kind of comes up high. Um, or you can take advantage of a friendly smoke screen. <laughs> um, but you can put effective fire um, on these positions from these outer flank positions that sometimes forces the enemy cruisers um, or battleships from having to withdraw from these positions. So they have to back up. And as they back up, um, they get broadside shot, maybe from a battleship, one of your friendlies who's paying attention. Or what we normally see is when uh, cruisers or battleship players, um, they forget that they have the S key for reverse. And instead, um, what they'll do is, is that they just, uh, they full send it where they turn out in front of you in order to get back. Um, but then that means they're just showing broadside and you can just punish them for that. I see so many cruisers in particular uh, that do this kind of thing um, where their, their position gets pressured and versus maybe just trying to hang in there, back up, get a little closer to the island. Um, they just, um, they get scared. And so they just pull out, do right at the begin, right at the start of a battle, maybe even after they've been radar, the cruiser itself gets like scared, like, oh, is enemy ships pushing in on me? Um, and then they just automatically do a, a 180 and you just get to punish them. I've been able to punish so many cruisers for doing this, um, especially with AP. You know, if I'm something like here in the Neptune um, or Wooster, um, and they do that to me, like I'm gonna punish you for doing that. Um, or, you know, if something like the Agir, 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 I don't know how to say that ship name. Um, you know, if they're trying to dump torpedoes off on you, um, then you're like, oh, okay, well, I know you're going to do that. So then I just know to be mindful of that and not just, uh, fully come out and let you get me. But this same, uh, concept, you know, that I'm illustrating here happens at any of these four positions. But what's great about if you're in a cruiser and you're at positioned at these more exterior positions is one, you can put pressure on these points here, um, on the enemy team cruisers. And then you're also preventing uh, maybe even battleships from pushing up because if the enemy battleship, uh, who maybe he's trying to flank or if they're just trying to push up through this way and you're in these positions um, and you can even, you know, like something like the Neptune, dump torpedoes on them pushing in and, you know, four second reload, um, it really tends to be a deterrent. Um, and it also destroyers will play, tend to play a bit more uh, conscious um, because of that, because so they'll, know, they'll hang back and they'll just try to dump torpedoes. Because um, when I'm in a destroyer, well, it's, no, I'll talk about that in a minute. So these positions are really good for cruisers. Um, you know, sometimes I'll see a cruiser just, oh, that's the wrong color again. Or we can, we can give the example from this perspective. 
Um, sometimes I'll see a cruiser just kind of like yellow rush towards the cap. And it can be dangerous for a cruiser to do that, especially at the beginning of a battle. In the beginning of a battle, uh, the earlier phases, I would say, you know, a cruisers need to kind of play cautiously, take these uh, one of these positions and get a feel for what the enemy team is doing. And then if they're weak on this flank, for example, um, then as uh, a cruiser, uh, you can eat, then, you know, decide to push up um, and apply more pressure um, on the enemy team. So these kind of tend to be uh, the first uh, positions. So I draw decimals too. Um, for uh, the enemy, t uh, for cruisers uh, here. I draw decimals. Let's draw decimals. It's kind of hard to erase them at times too. I'll get rid of these lines. Um, so this tends to be the first position, and then you know, with the second position. Uh, you'll find, you know, if a flank is folding, um, then, you know, maybe you're pushing up and then all of a sudden this becomes your second position um, as a cruiser um, or even, you know, moving up to here. Just as an example, the second positions, you know, tend to be moving up. Um, now when it comes to, let's say maybe your flank um, is falling apart. Uh, your team is not doing well and you're in a cruiser or in one of these four positions. Um, that is when you try to utilize the islands behind you if you need to disengage. So if the enemy team is pushing really strongly here, and if, for example, if I'm you know somewhere in this area as a cruiser, um, I'll just try, I'll just turn out, and then maybe I, I slingshot off this island because I don't want to just kite this way because that means I'm showing broadside to any enemy battleships um, that are paying attention, and I'm showing a little bit much too much side. Uh, to enemy ships pushing here. Um, so you get to use these islands um, in the back here um, as parts where you can just kind of slingshot off, regroup with your team, um, and put the effective fire on. And you have the same thing uh, for up here for the enemy team, uh, right? If you're up here, you know, you can kind of like, oh, I need to back off. Um, because this island, um, there's a couple of points in it uh, where you can lob shells over pretty well. So if the enemy team's advancing on you, you know, you can uh, utilize this island quite well. Um, you know, same thing uh, with these two islands here. Because that's a, again, terrible circle. I'm not a, I wasn't an art major. Um, but you can also utilize uh, these two islands here um, to help, you know, put some fire on pressure of the enemy team um, if they're pushing um, you. So that's, that's the beauty about the working these um, more the side, uh, closer to the outskirts of the map, is that you have these islands here that you can utilize to kind of help give you support as a cruiser if the enemy team's um, pushing you. Um, yes. So let's see. <laughs> Make sure I talk about what I want to talk about with cruisers um, and their positioning. But the good thing is, too, especially if you're in a more... Um, let's say something like the Petropavlovsk, right? You're a really strong, sturdy uh, Russian cruiser. You know, you can, if you're in one of these positions and the enemy team's showing signs of weakness, I mean, you can kind of be the bully um, and being able to uh, push up on the enemy team, right? Because these islands, yes, they work well uh, for the enemy team, but that doesn't mean that you um, can't utilize these positions as well. Um, because if, when you come to these, like, say, inside positions, and the same goes for the enemy team, too, um, you're denying, you know, any fire for, uh, if there's any enemy team uh, members on this side uh, being able to put pressure on you, uh, and maybe then you can focus on um, firing out this way, right? So it works really well to be able to push up, especially when you have uh, this big uh, center island in the middle. If this big center island wasn't here in the middle, um, <laughs> uh, can you imagine how many torpedoes would be constantly flooding through here? Because that's the thing, you have to be conscious um, in these uh, positions. And let's just go ahead and talk about um, how cruisers interact with carriers and will walk down to destroyers. Um, because this is really cruisers, when they're fighting on this map, um, the, most of the interaction happens with destroyers um, pushing up on you, right? So... Uh, Oh, it looks like I do one, two line there. Uh, so carriers. Um, so as we've talked about, um, carriers, you know, they tend to position and spawn, uh, you know, one of these two islands. 
uh, that's where they tend to position. So you as a cruiser, um, you might be feeling more pressure uh, from uh, enemy uh, aircraft care uh, sending planes in um, because one of the hard uh, times, if there's a CV player who's being mindful of this, is when you're pinned uh, alongside this island, um, it's not like you're maneuvering, it's not like you can necessarily go anywhere. And then so if, uh, let's say, cruiser or aircraft carrier sends his planes, he's flying this way, and then he loops in with torpedo planes, right? Um, they can do that um, to you quite easily here, here. So that's something you have to be mindful of um, in trying to negate the damage. Um, the mistake that I'll see players here too is when an aircraft carrier is doing enough torpedo planes is that um, cruiser players will just take off, right? Kind of like what again I was talking about over here. Um, they'll take off trying to avoid those torpedoes and you're showing broadside to the enemy team who's going to take advantage of that. Um, so you have to be mindful um, of that. Typically, a really good, I mean, a good aircraft carrier players know how they need to apply pressure uh, on the enemy team. Um, if you know if there's destroyers here, you know that carrier may be spending time trying to spot the destroyer in your cap. But if he's not being able to detect them, say he smoked up or something, um, then he might be able to send um, a squadron in on you too. And that's the second thing because uh, with enemy carriers like the dive bombers, right? If you get something like the uh, tier 10 uh, German CV, where it's got excellent those uh, AP dive bombs, dive bombers, and just takes half your health, right? Um, that can make these positions a little bit more tricky. Now, you don't always get carriers um, in the matchmaking, but that's something you have to, it's kind of a, these positions aren't super risky, but when it deals sometimes with aircraft carriers, they can be, especially if the aircraft carrier player wants to dislodge you uh, from these positions and they use something like torpedo planes, they use dive bombers, um, then that can become a, uh, tricky for you um, rather quickly. So that's why I always like to also take the AA flag just to get that uh, extra buff and damage. Um, battleship players, um, as we've talked about, when you're in these positions, it's um, it's harder for a battleship to get line of sight on you um, as they kind of you know float out around here. Um, but the threat that comes to these positions is once the enemy team uh, starts pushing, or let's say you have something like the Georgia or uh, enemy Palmer. Uh, right where they decide to flank and put pressure and as they do that they get direct line of sight of you um, as they push up and so then that puts your uh, position at risk as a cruiser and that's when it's important to kind of back up and stay nose try to keep more angled nosed in um, to um, the battleships pushing in uh, or even a cruiser and hoping that your team will be able to respond to the threat um, quickly um, but still trying to keep this island um, in between you because as soon as you back out the enemy team battleships are going to be able to punish you So that's kind of that's most of the, the biggest threat that you'll get uh, from battleships um, Secondly is if you're not hugging the island well um, and I, <laughs> um, Again, I feel like I'm always spawning on uh, this side of the map, but if I'm in a battleship like um, the Georgia and I'm pushing and I'm kind of, I'm playing this area for a little bit in the beginning and I see a cruiser or a battleship that pushes up alongside this island but the the fault I'll see sometimes is they're not close enough to the island. They're actually like further out over here. And because they're far enough out, I can uh, lob my AP shells just enough over the island um, to get some uh, pretty chunked damage uh, done to them. So that's why it's important um, as a cruiser that you want to stay um, tight to the island to prevent uh, that from happening, or even if you're a battleship player. Um, yeah, the other thing is, is if you nose up too far sometimes, um, you know, there can be something, you know, something like a Musashi of Vermont um, that's able to um, take advantage of uh, penetrating your nose. So when you're a cruiser here, you really have to be mindful of not pushing up too far. So let me, let me draw a white line here. Um, something kind of like this. This kind of like, just draw this as an example. I 
I'm actually going to leave that center part open there. Um, is you generally want to play in between these white lines, right? And this is a really uh, spot here that you don't want to be sitting here as a cruiser because I've seen cruisers do this before where they're like, oh, like I'm going to be cheeky and maybe I'm going to go further up. Oh, let me use a different color. Um, but they're like, oh, I'm going to be cheeky and I'm going to push in uh, farther and try to get here. Um, you're putting yourself more at risk, risk to battleships um, being able to put line of fire on you. But I've even seen some cruisers uh, on the enemy team uh, or my team to sit broadside in this channel uh, to battleships or cruisers sitting here. Um, and that's just instantly, like I'll punish that the instant I see that. Um, so with this island, you, uh, you generally want to play on these two islands. You don't want to just be sitting here um, in the center. But these white lines is kind of like, you know, don't go past them. And I'm drawing the line off of, uh, you know, just right outside the island. I'm not saying be out here um, in a cruiser, because that means you're too far out if you're somewhere over here. But you kind of think of it as, maybe I should add this. I think of it as kind of like a, a box maybe, where it's kind of like you're inside that white line uh, as a cruiser, you're not going out past that. Um, because the farther out you are, the more at risk you are to taking damage from battleships, cruisers, and maybe even eating some torpedoes. So you want to hug the island um, quite well. And only do you kind of nose up when you know you can effectively do so without taking punishment from the in enemy team. Um, because these uh, positions work really well, but you just have to be mindful too about not backing out too far um, and getting punished. So. The map awareness is, you have to have really good map awareness as a cruiser player to utilize um, these island chains uh, really well. Um, so just keep that in mind. And I'm gonna leave these white lines up a little bit too. Um, because the next thing that you'll see, I feel like I favor this side too much, um, is, you know, destroyer players as they push in, um, you know, to contest these cap areas. Um, is that destroyers like to dump torpedoes um, off um, as they're moving up. So you can kind of have, um, you know, this is kind of like the danger zone for torpedoes um, coming through. More so these first two orange lines. So if you get a little um, too cheeky as a cruiser and you push up too far, you can eat two or three torpedoes, especially if there's something, you know, like a British destroyer um, or even a British cruiser who single launches the torpedoes and you move out too far and you, you know, four torpedoes in a line and you eat them, uh, yeah, that's gonna do significant damage to you if not kill you. Um, so you have to be mindful um, that these are really strong torpedo alleys and how to, you know, again, stay, you know, close into the island. There's no need for you to rush out within, you know, the first uh, five minutes of the map. You know, you sit here, um, you utilize your radar, you're supporting your team um, because a cruiser player who rushes out and gets killed quickly uh, with your radar, then you just really uh, hampered your team uh, really strongly uh, with that. Now with these um, orange lines here, uh, one thing that I often see, I'll use the orange line for um, destroyer players, um, is that destroyer players on in general in World of Warships, and I'm gonna say the ma majority of destroyer players. I'm going to say more than 50%. Um, destroyer players can be some of the most impatient uh, uh, players uh, on this map. So, you know, let's say you've got, um, you know, a destroyer in here um, capping for your team. And then let's say, um, you know, this destroyer here, he was like, well, I'm not getting any progress done. I'm contesting the cap, but contesting the cap is not good enough for me. And then they decide, I've had enough, and they yellow around the corner um, to try to take on uh, the enemy destroyer. And in the process, you know, if there's a cruiser sitting here, there's a cruiser sitting here, um, they're instantly able to punish uh, the destroyer. Um, and usually this destroyer um, player is still gonna be fine. Now, one thing I've had to happen to me multiple times, um, I've also done it myself, but in a better way, <laughs> is that I'll see, uh, let's see, orange line for the destroyer. Uh, I'll be sitting here, and I have a clip of this. Uh, I'm sitting here in the Wooster, and I think it's a, a Kleber or Kabarosk um, gets tired of me sitting in this position. So he decides, 
Um, I'm going to yellow rush him and I'm going to make him pay. Right, because one of the risks of being in these uh, four positions is the shorter players uh, often like to uh, push in and try to yellow torque brush you. But because I, I knew this was a possibility, um, I was being mindful of it in the booster. So actually what I did is I um, backed up out of this position uh, to, well, it wasn't that uh, aggressive. Let me do this. Um, I backed up around the island to like here and all of his torpedoes, they hit the corner of this island and I killed them, I took them out. But again, there's the risk. You back out behind this island, you can get punished. And so I backed out and I think there was some, it was a Russian cruiser. Um, I think it was a Stalingrad um, who chunked me for like in total half my health. He got two salvos off on me before I was able to get back into the island coverage. But it was either lose half my health or eat a bunch of torpedoes in the face, right? Um, so you have to be, you have to have that map awareness, right? We were talking about that map awareness to know that um, you can have destroyer players who are being aggressive and they're going to try to push you um, and take you out of these positions. And the same goes vice versa. But I feel like I see it ha happen most often here. Um, I've done it before, not from the front of the island, mind you, um, where, for example, there was a, <laughs> I have a clip of this too. Um, I was in the gearing and my team was losing really bad and it was only like within the first five minutes of the battle um, and I was like great I'm gonna have to play risky now in order to help my team so I was I think I was uh, starting off here but I actually went around this way and there was a Montana parked right here and you want to know where the radar cruiser was on their team back here <laughs> So what I did was, is I popped uh, out here and I uh, made a U-turn, but I dumped all my, both of my sets of torpedoes, 10 torpedoes in the broadside of this Montana. And he hadn't fired his guns yet when I was detected, uh, but he was tunnel visioning. Well, his guns were focused on firing some dead guy all the way over here. And only his secondaries got a few shots off on me. And by the time uh, the cruiser on the enemy team reacted, it was too late. I popped my smoke, I was out. He popped his radar. His radar was too late. I was already um, exiting his radar range. So that should have been the word reverse. You know, the radar should, the cruiser should have been sitting here. The battleship uh, player should have sitted, been sitting back here for a Montana, you know, a bit more of a somewhat more snipey. Um, but you can take advantage. And that's, and that was a risk, but I was, I had the situational awareness was like, well, the radar cruiser is, he, you know, he uh, turned and ran. He was like kind of up here. Then he like ran back here. So because he backed off, I'm going to move up and I'm going to torpedo the crap out of this Montana. Uh, and it was really funny. <laughs> so much non-map awareness by the Montana player on his part. So again, as a radar cruiser or radar cruiser, cruiser in general, or even if you're a battleship using this position, you have to be mindful of what is the enemy team doing? What is the destroyers or what are they doing in particular? And the same as, you know, we've talked about um, before as well um, with uh, destroyers, uh, players who also like to push the flank, uh, right? So if you're in a cruiser in one of these positions, you also have to be mindful that there could be a destroyer who um, could kind of sneak around, uh, right? And a torpedo uh, yellow you. And this is happening all the time. I don't know if this is ever going to change, but the, if you play the Paolo Emilio, just stop. <laughs> stop yellow rushing in the first four minutes of the game. You take one ship with you and you're dead, right? The yellow can happen, but wait, like maybe after 10 minutes of the battle has passed. When I have a Paolo Emilio on my team, uh, I had this happen to me the other night. I was in Neptune and there's a, a Paolo Emilio on my team and I was like, great. He's just going to yellow rush. Um, and kill himself. Well, he took the Amagi out, but then he died right after. So I was eh, somewhat okay-ish trade, but I would have rather ha kept the uh, Polio Emilio, uh, Emilio player alive. Um, so you have to be mindful that those types of players and those ships, most of them, not all of them, they watch YouTube videos, they want to recreate themselves, uh, copy it, um, but they, they're yellow rush, right? So if you're in a cruiser and your, let's say, radar or your aircraft carrier player spots the Polyomelio moving this way, 
then you need to be prepared as a cruiser player that he's going to yellow rush most likely. Um, you know, eight, I would say eight times out of 10, a Palio Mido player is gonna rush the first opening minutes of the map. So take that as you will. So, um, you, so you just have to be mindful um, of how you interact, particularly with destroyers, because I think that's maybe the biggest challenge you have, because especially if you're in a cruiser and you're sitting here and all of a sudden you become detected and it's just someone spotting you, um, then you know there's, you know, there could be a, a destroyer player um, out here in this area who's detecting you in this position or the same if, you know, uh, vice versa. Um, and that can put you at risk. And then like, if I'm being, if I'm sitting in this position and I'm being detected and I'm, and I can't detect that what's detecting me, then that usually tells me that there is a um, destroyer player who has moved up and they are lining up torpedoes on me. That's likely probably gonna come from uh, this direction, something like that. Um, and then usually, if I have hydroacoustic search, of course I'll pop it, but then I'll just kind of back up. Or if I feel like this flank's starting to fold, um, then I'll do my best to back up and then I turn. Uh, yeah, let me just briefly touch on that real quick. So if you're in a cruiser and the enemy team is pushing you, uh, they're, they're pushing the flank and you know the flank's gonna fold, um, you need to do this maneuver sooner rather than later, uh, is what I'll do is, let me actually just kind of erase like, this whole shenanigan um, is if I'm sitting like up here and the enemy team is pushing and I know, or I know they're getting ready to push, I'll back up and then I'll turn out, right? Because when you're going a slower speed, your uh, turning circle radius is much uh, smaller, you're able to maneuver a bit better versus if I go full speed, then that takes more time to turn. Um, so you want to back up and then use the island to cover more of your broadside um, in getting out. Because usually, you know, by the time I'm kind of showing broadside to this, by the time the enemy team fires, I've already straightened up or I'm at a really good angle where I can bounce most of the shells. Um, so yeah, so if you find yourself on the flank folding, um, just try to utilize the island position um, and being able to, uh, you know, this island is really good for it too, but just if you're sitting up here, you know, back up and then turn out. And that will keep you much safer. Um, again, you, you use the island as a defensive position and especially when you're able to use it as a retreating off of when you're a cruiser and the enemy team's pushing and you can just uh, bounce out um, using the island for your coverage. Um, it will really help you and you'll take less damage um, as the enemy team uh, pushes in on you. So I think that covers what I want to cover, uh, particularly for, for cruisers um, on this map. Um, and as we've um, discussed, um, we've gone over. Um, it's a really fun map, in my opinion, when it comes to cruiser play, because um, I love being able to um, utilize um, these four islands um, as a cruiser player, or if I'm something like the Neptune, um, you know, those type of ship, uh, that type of ship with only having AP, it does more damage better um, if you're able to take more of the, um, where you can get more of an angle, you can get more of the side shots happening, right? Um, your, your armor piercing becomes more damaging uh, versus just shooting at a bow and cruise your battleship. Um, and that will really help you. Because it's always fun, especially too, if the enemy team's holding off, uh, you know, you get to use these islands to kinda, uh, hunt, uh, maneuver up, and then you get to turn the, the island, um, you know, if the enemy team's falling back, um, your flank's kind of like, uh, you're pushing like that, then you get to use this island um, as coverage and being able to, you know, something like this so other enemy ships can't get a fire on you um, because you're just taking advantage uh, of blocking. Um, you're reducing the number of ships that have a possible firing solution on you. And you should always be doing that regardless of what ship type you are um, in World of Warships, is you always want to limit how many uh, <coughs> how many enemy ships have a firing solution on you. Um, and just trying to isolate more of those one-on-one -on -one, uh, engagements. So I hope you appreciated today's video and we'll be talking about destroyers next week. 
So if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe if you want to see more. If you haven't subscribed, thanks so much and really appreciate it. Until next time, take care.